know that Disney World has totally changed one of their most expensive hotels? Let's check it out. Yep, it's time. We are checking out the Incredibles re-theme of one of Disney World's most historic hotels, Disney's Contemporary Resort. This hotel is the closest hotel to Magic Kingdom. You can walk there, the monorail goes right through it, and it's been open since Disney World's opening day way back in 1971, so it's pretty historic. This hotel recently got a pretty extensive Incredibles re-theme to the rooms and many of the common areas, and a lot of the common areas in general have been refurbished as well, so we're going to check out all the things that have changed. You might not have seen them yet. So Disney's Contemporary Resort is a pretty large hotel. It consists of this huge mainframe building that if you've been to Disney World, you've probably seen while you're on your way to Magic Kingdom. And there's also Bay Lake Tower, the more recently built DVC villa offering. That's Disney Vacation Club, Disney's timeshare program. And then there is the Garden Wing as well. The hotel's theme is contemporary, but for 1971, uh, plus the new re-theme with the Incredibles added on top. Super interesting, super unique. I'm a really big fan of it. Other people, it kind of goes either way. So you have to let me know what you think of the theme after you've checked it out in this video. The Contemporary is a Magic Kingdom area hotel. It is right next to the theme park. It does have the monorail going right through it, and it is one of the most expensive hotels in Disney World. When you arrive to the Contemporary, you'll probably arrive right here on the first floor. Now this hotel's layout is a little confusing. I'm gonna talk you through it so that you are a pro next time you want to explore this hotel. Now, in my opinion, the Contemporary is a must visit, whether you're staying here or just come by for a dining reservation or just cruise through on the monorail for a number of reasons. I will show you all of them today. So make sure you're listening up. That's why you should stop by the Contemporary next time. So we're starting here on the first floor, which is where you'll come to check in. It is obviously the lobby. First thing you can see is this column, which has some calls to Mary Blair art. It's very pretty. And there's even a Contemporary Grounds coffee shop down here. It is around check-in time now, so the coffee shop has closed for the day, unfortunately. No Joffreys to start my tour. What am I gonna do? Make coffee in the room. So on our way up to the room, let's check out a few of those offerings that you'll see right on the first floor, and then we can head up and check out our Incredibles themed room. And there's a special surprise when it comes to our view. So like I said, here on the first floor is Contemporary Grounds. This is the Contemporary's coffee shop. It usually closes around 1 p.m. each day, but it does have full Joffreys offerings and bonus they can even do like Disney themed latte art here, which is super cool. One big thing to know if you are planning on staying at the Contemporary is it is home to a convention center as well. If there's a convention going on, the resort can get rather crowded, especially around the convention center, which is located right here. It's this wavy blue and yellow building. In general, this resort is on the crowded side just because it does have a big draw with it being so historic and having so many great dining locations. Plus the convention can bring a lot of people here as well and it's rather large. There's a lot of rooms here. If you visited the Contemporary recently, the lobby might look a little different. It has gotten extensive refurbishment to kind of go with that nice 1970s, more updated contemporary theme. I think it looks amazing. I want to decorate my house like this. The lobby is where you'll find access to Bell Services, which is where you can drop your bags if you need to, whether that's because you arrive before your room is ready or you need to check out before you're ready to leave Disney World entirely and drop your bags with Bell Services. And then I did use mobile check-in today, so I'm gonna get to skip the front desk, which means you can just check in in the My Disney Experience app ahead of your stay. Now, when you do use mobile check-in, you can mark if you're gonna arrive before check-in time, which is 3 p.m. My room was ready a little bit early today. It was ready at 1 p.m. because I said I was gonna get here around 10 a.m. So I did end up getting to get into my room a little early. That's a pro tip if you think you'll be here early is make sure to use that mobile check-in. But check-in is at 3 p.m. typically, and that's when your room is set to be ready. If you'd rather check in the traditional way or have any issues with that mobile check-in, you can always come talk to the lovely cast members here at the check-in desks and check out some of the cool art in this lobby area while you wait. The recent refurbishment of this lobby area really added a lot of character, I think. There's a lot of Mary Blair inspired art down here. Mary Blair, of course, being the famous Imagineer who designed It's a Small World. So she's a total icon. And there's a lot more seating, including, of course, a little area for the kiddos to watch TV while their parents check in. And even a photo here on the wall of Mary Blair herself up at the Contemporary Concourse. I definitely recommend taking a look at some of the art here, whether you're checking in or not, because a lot of it is concept art for the hotel itself, or at least meant to look like concept art for the hotel. 
It's gorgeous, amazing, I love it all. I am literally obsessed with these chairs. I want them in my home so badly. How cool are those? You've got access to the outdoors and the pool area, which we will certainly check out after we head up to the room. But the last thing that I just wanna point out before we head upstairs and see our new refurbed room is Steakhouse 71, which is a more casual dining table service steakhouse restaurant here. And it also has a lounge. We will be checking Steakhouse 71 out a little bit later. Now this restaurant is fairly new. It did open on October 1st of 2021, which was Disney World's 50th anniversary. So also the 50th anniversary of the contemporary. It's got a 1970s theme to it. It's supposed to be like a 70s steakhouse and you can see a lot of concept art for Magic Kingdom, as well as photos of Walt Disney and the Imagineers working on Disney World in the restaurant. Also, it has awesome food and drinks, <laughs> so which is why I'm going there for dinner and I'm taking you with me and you don't wanna miss it. But enough about this lobby area. Let's head up to the room and we will get back to that resort tour after we check out what I am so excited about, all the cool details of the Incredibles rooms. So navigating the Contemporary is a little bit tricky. You can take an elevator up from the lobby, but you can also take the escalators and head through the fourth floor, which is the grand concourse of the Contemporary. Let's check it out. Escalators feel very 80s, really, more than 70s because of malls. But I guess the 70s had to lay the groundwork for the escalator to thrive, you know what I mean? So when you enter the contemporary lobby downstairs, you're probably like, oh, well, this isn't a very grand space like they have at other Disney hotels. The grand space is up here on the fourth floor, which is where you'll see this massive open space, which is just really cool. This is always why I love this hotel so much. It can get loud, but it's a very, very cool space. We're gonna check out everything there is to see on this floor, which is a lot. But first, we're gonna head up and see our room because that's what I'm more excited about and I wanna show you guys and show myself because I've never been in the Incredibles rooms before. All right, we're here on the ninth floor. You can see that the rooms of the Contemporary are literally let out onto the lobby on these like really cool sort of balcony-esque things. Really great view of the monorail track from right here. But let's find our room. I'm so excited. As you can see here in the hallway, the common areas of the resort have gotten that Incredibles re-theme. There's Incredibles themed art as you go down towards your room, which is pretty cool. There are a number of them too, different ones. And we're right next to an Elastigirl painting, my favorite. <gasps> Yay! Also, I really like that if you look across, I can see all that incredible art, <laughs> incredible art, uh, between each of the rooms on the opposite side of the hotel as well. I think it looks really nice. I do think that people who are more averse to the heavy theming might not love it, but I love the new designs and theming. Also, from my door, I have a really great view of this Mary Blair mural, which was, of course, designed by the famous Mary Blair and is a pretty much a staple of the theming here at the Contemporary. Say hi to Elastigirl and let's head in. You can access your room either using your magic band, a room key that you get from the front desk, or you can use the My Disney Experience app. My magic band never works. Hang on all as well because the my disney experience app does have an unlock door feature and just like that we're in oh it looks so cool all right an incredible themed room in one of my favorite hotels i am freaking out oh my gosh it's so cute i've seen pictures but this is awesome as i told you i am in the main tower um, only some of the rooms at the Contemporary have been refurbished at this time. The ones in the garden ring are, I think, in progress of refurbishment. And then uh, Bay Lake Tower is for DVC. So I'm in the main tower to make sure I got an Incredibles room. Um, and I have a very cool view. Let's take a look at it together. Behind our Incredibles curtains, so cute. Yes, we have a theme park view room. What a fun treat for our staycation. Uh, and of course, you know I'm going to be watching Disney Enchantment, the fireworks tonight from my balcony. It's going to be very cool. I can't wait to do it with you guys. This room looks so cute already. So we are certainly starting with a room tour this time, and we'll get to the rest of the hotel after. But let's take a look around. Woo! All right, so as you saw, you come into this little hallway. We've got storage on the left, bathroom on the right. And then you walk into the main space of the room, which has, in my case, two queen beds. On the right, a lot of space. This is a very spacious room. In fact, the contemporary rooms are some of the largest on property. And then we have this cute orange couch, which is a sleeper couch. 
First impressions of the Incredibles theme, I am totally in love. I love all the monorail motifs and the sort of mid-modern vibe that comes with the Incredibles. I think it's super cute. I will say, I don't think it's for everyone. It's definitely heavily themed. So if you're looking for something that doesn't feel so themed, this is not going to be the kind of room refurb that you like. I love a theme. I'm waking out in here. There are so many little details that I can't wait to show you and you would never know about until you stayed here and got to take a look. The first of those little details is in this big orange closet that you see right when you come in or potentially red. I can't see the shades of red very well. Um, that's a fun fact about me. But if you open this closet, it's a pretty spacious little storage space. And on the back wall, are all of the incredible family costumes complete with their boots and shoes and then of course the top shelf set aside for masks more practical things than incredibles art in the closet you've got an extra pillow and blanket your hair dryer is in here a steamer most disney world hotel rooms don't have this i typically only see it at deluxe resorts like this one plenty of coat hangers ton of coat hangers as well as plenty of space to hang things a luggage rack and then you'll notice this room doesn't have a chest of drawers so some of your drawers are here in the closet you've got three relatively spacious drawers here and that's not all of the drawers either in this big cabinet right here to the right of your closet you've got some storage shelves here um your built or not built in it's not a built-in safe but it is a safe for your use um, more shelving and then two more drawers. So there actually is a surprising amount of storage space. It's just a little more hidden than in some other Disney World hotel rooms. Past the closet, we've got more fun details. This is the sort of like drinks area where you've got your Keurig and your ice box. But the back also has this super cute, incredible theme to it. The top shelf looks like it's a little bar theme um, with like incredible drinks. Wouldn't it be? crazy if there was an incredible themed bar and then below you've got mugs that are all themed you've got dev tech from the incredibles 2 mode edna mode the happy platter from the incredibles 2 and safari court i don't know what that is that one's giving me i'm perplexed i'm not getting that reference someone explain it to me in the comments when you do want your coffee you'll find all your supplies for coffee and teas and creamers and things like that complimentary right here you can request more if you need some from the front desk and then below that, we've got our cabinet that hides our mini fridge. And these renovated rooms do have the like glass door, relatively sizable mini fridge, big enough for your leftovers, maybe not for your groceries. Then you've got this ledge, which is probably where I'm gonna put my bag, um, but a good spot for you to have your shoes or whatever you might, like keys. I can see myself throwing my keys down there um, with my Coco keychain. Another thing that's true about this room that's true of a lot of Disney World refurbished hotel rooms is that there are a ton of outlets. There are some wall outlets, but then a lot of these built-in units of furniture come with more outlets and USB ports. You can see some in the middle there. There's some on the sides of each bed as well. And there's one on the built-in unit behind the sleeper bed. You've got this big side table, which doubles as a little seating spot with this little pull-out cushion thing. This, uh, I don't think I would use if I were in here, if I wasn't using the sleeper bed, but it's awesome to have if you do have that sleeper bed opened up the whole time. The ever important take along guide to the magic, plus your TV remote, which of course controls this very sizable TV. I think it's the same as normal, but something about this black border on it that is lit from behind makes it looks, look a little bigger. I think it looks really nice. Um, I was a little disappointed to find that this isn't one of the smart TVs. I've still only seen the smart TVs at Grand Estino Tower at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort and at Disney's Riviera Resort. But that's one of my favorite Disney hotel amenities that you just can't find everywhere. Another little incredible detail is with this mask pillow. I wish they gave you a mask for this room. Something I always want in deluxe hotels is robes, but this one should be robes and a superhero mask. Next up, we've got this really nice table. I think it fits the theme super well. It looks good. And maybe the coolest lamp ever. Maybe not ever, but in a Disney World hotel room, definitely. It's like got this like super interesting design. And then check this out. If you just press this, or not even press it, you just kind of tap it. It changes the brightness. I'm freaking out. I am super scared of the dark. And when I'm staying in these hotel rooms alone, I sleep with some lights on. And I have a lot of options in here. There's like the behind the TV lights. I can put this on whatever brightness I want. There's lights above the beds, lights in the ceiling, lights everywhere. I'm not going to be afraid of the dark in here. We already took a gander at our theme park view, but let's take a little more in-depth in look at the window. So it's got this really cute border on it that I think ties the room together. It feels very contemporary resort to me while also feeling very Incredibles, which I think is cool. You've got 
your privacy curtains first, which I'm not sure you'd really need up here because I don't know who's looking in your room from here, but you do have privacy curtains that kind of shade you with all of the Incredibles featured, Mr. Incredible, Mrs. Incredible, Violet, Jack-Jack, and Dash. I did that in the wrong order, but still, that's who they are. Uh, and then you've also got the blackout curtains, which one, great for napping, and two, super cool design. You can see the Incredibles kind of like from the um, credits of the second movie. You've got the monorail, Mrs. Incredible, Mr. Incredible, Jack-Jack flying through the air. Dash is in the folds, but he's right there. And then Violet's up there in the corner in a force field. Super cool blackout curtains. Let's check out that balcony. So not all Disney World hotels have balconies. The Contemporary does, and ours is extra special because we can see Magic Kingdom from here. Two locks on the door. Just pull it open and head on out. The balcony here is pretty sizable. I will say it's high up. It feels high up. You've got these two chairs and a little table for your use. It's also not very well shaded. I'm like directly in the sunlight right now. Earlier, it was shaded by this little ledge up here, but that doesn't even cover the whole balcony. So rain and sun are probably going to get to you out here a little bit and then of course we have our amazing view so with the theme park view rooms our main attraction is to the right where we can see the monorail going past spaceship earth and magic kingdom i can see a ton of magic kingdom i can see beast castle it's kind of hard to see on camera seven dwarves mine train i think yeah definitely i can see big thunder mountain railroad i can see splash mountain i can see the train station i can see a lot of main street top of crystal palace i have a really good view of tomorrowland from here and my view of enchantment is going to be so wild i can already tell then you've got a really nice view of seven seas lagoon as well so you're also getting a water view with grand floridian and polynesian in the distance i can see all the boats going by which i love and is so peaceful then you've got a lot of green area, and I have no idea if you guys can see this, but way, 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 way in the distance over there is Expedition Everest. So I can see all the way to Animal Kingdom. I also, I believe, am seeing the swan and dolphin over there too, which makes me think you'd think I'd be able to see um, Spaceship Earth, but maybe I cannot. This is hands down the best view I've ever had at a Disney World Resort hotel. This is a super expensive hotel room. More on that in a second, but oh my goodness enchantment views are gonna be like this is like just as good as watching it from the california girl at the roof i mean this is nice the balconies are also pretty private like i'm sure i'd be able to hear somebody if they were next door right now but you've got these big like either concrete or i guess plaster i don't know what that is columns that block you off from other people so they're pretty private too i don't have sunscreen on so we're going back inside speaking of air conditioning you do have a thermostat that you can set to whatever you want. I have mine set on 72 because I like a warm room. Beds wise, we've got a Frozone bed and an Edna Mode bed. You know, everybody is either a Frozone or an Edna Mode. Let me know in the comments if you're a Frozone or an Edna Mode. Uh, that's actually kind of a hard question. I think I'm more of an Edna Mode. They are queen size beds with this very unique headboard on them. It's kind of all one unit which is pretty typical of the renovated rooms here in Disney World. These furnishings feel really nice though. I don't always feel, I don't always feel like the renovated rooms are that homey. And I think this one is really well done. There's no art on the wall, but there is this cool zigzag design situation. Between the two beds, you have this sort of like lifted bedside table situation with your phone and some notes about safety when using the phone. You've also got the cutest lamp in maybe the whole world and I want it in my house with the monorail on it. So cute. And then another of my favorite details, you got this drawer, which has Incredibles theming in it. That's the remote to the Incredicar, the sunglasses Mr. Incredibles wears, a mostly Jack Jack Num Num cookie, uh, the math textbook, and then Mr. Incredibles to-do list, which um, learn new math. That's important. Uh, buy more cookies. Also important. Stop the underminer. I got to put that one on my to-do list. For much of my life, and even in the comments on our YouTube videos sometimes, people have told me that I remind them of Kari from Incredibles 1, the babysitter. And to that I say, Hi Mrs. Parr, it's me. Jack-Jack is fine, but weird things are happening. Also, experts say Mozart's makes babies smarter. It's like you're watching the movie, right? I'm in an Incredibles room doing a Kari impression. I don't have braces, but I could have brought my retainer. The infinite lighting of this room continues as well. We've got this little reading light, 
which turns on automatically when you open it. I love these in the hotel rooms. They do a really good job of like keeping light on one person if somebody else is trying to sleep. And then you've got these low side tables, which is great for charging devices, especially because it's got some of those outlets next to them. As for more storage space, there's a ton under the beds. I venture to say perhaps even more than I've ever seen in a Disney World hotel room because you've got the under storage space under the center console as well. So tons of under bed storage space and what is already a spacious room. The Contemporary has a number of different room types. There are the garden wing rooms, which tend to be the cheapest. Then the main tower has lake view or theme park view. There are club level rooms and then there are some suites as well with one to two bedroom suites and the presidential suite. And that's not counting the different studio and villa options over at Bay Lake Tower, which we'll talk about when we head over there later. Pricing wise, the garden wing rooms are going to run you from about $530 to about $1,050 per night. Main tower is going to run you about $750 to around $1,260 per night. Club level runs from around $960 to over $1,600 per night. And suites run from over $1,400 per night to over $5,000 per night here. That's the presidential suite. Now that's all important to note that Disney World's hotel pricing does vary based on date. So if you're coming at the cheaper times of year, which is usually January, February-ish, you're gonna get those cheaper prices and around the holidays are gonna be the most expensive. And you should definitely, definitely, definitely keep an eye out for discounts because sometimes you might be able to get a discount for being an annual pass holder or a Florida resident or just visiting at the right time or even a Disney Plus subscriber. So make sure you're checking for discounts. And that's pretty much our hotel room. Uh, we got to check out the bathroom still, but before we head in there, I have to do some super bed science. So I'm going to need to lift her up because uh, I'm not a superhero, but I got to do superhero level bed science. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, I think that was pretty super. Yeah, these are comfy. I don't know if I just haven't been on a Disney bed in a while, but like this feel really comfy. The, um... Nice mix of firm and springy. Perfect to kind of match most people's tastes. Uh, I think I'm going to have a good sleep on this. Got to test out the pillows. Oh. oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with these pillows. I did order them. They did come to my house. They are delightful. I'm sleeping better. I'm I'm happier. I may be being dramatic, but they're good pillows. But bed science is not complete because there's another bed in here. A sleeper bed. So, you know what time it is? We need decorating montage. Ooh. Sleeper bed is out. This is a typical Disney sleeper bed. What I like about this one is that part of the couch stays intact, which is really cool. I didn't really have to move that table. I did, but I did not need to. So it's a really like, I think it's a good use of space. There's still a ton of space in the room because you're not pulling anything out. It's awesome. So let's see how comfy it is. I don't typically love the comfort level on these. We're not gonna go super on this one. We're gonna go safety first and just do a nice sit to lie. Okay, yeah, she's not the best. This one feels a little bit like it's just a block of foam. It's squishy, but I think my back might hurt a little bit if I slept on this. I would, because if I had an opportunity to stay in this room and I had to sleep on the sleeper mattress, I would, but maybe stick your kiddo on this one. Uh, kids are springy. They can sleep on the, listen to that. Not my fate. I'm going to be sleeping in either the frozen or the end of mode bed, so not the cool orange sleeper couch. All right, let's check out a bathroom fit for a superhero. Do you guys think Edna designed these rooms? Because I think she might have. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. In here, full length mirror. So you can see me do this. Okay, back at it, bathroom. So big slidey door here, barn door style, um, which is important because in that first room there is a shower. So there's not like a second door to the shower like I see a lot of the time. And I will say, I don't believe this door has a lock of any kind. So there is no lock on the room that holds the shower, which is interesting, but there is one on the sliding door here that leads to the commode room. There's a lock involved here as well. Oh, plot twist, it's a double sliding door. What? Crazy. Lock is featured here, you just turn it to lock. Really big mirror with this monorail detailing on it. Very cute. Double vanity with a lot of space. Just in general, the bathroom is very spacious. A huge and beautiful shower tub combo. It's gorgeous. One of my favorite like 
wash yourself options I've seen in Disney hotels. And then you've got your commode room off to the side over here. But let's look at the details. Right when you walk in, you've got these sets of hooks for your towels or whatever you need to hang up. And then on the vanity, we have the ever important makeup mirror. This is on the fun side. <laughs> this is the fun side. <laughs> The mirror itself actually has the contemporary on it with a monorail looking like it's zooming off into the sky. That's questionable, but I like it. Then we've got our huge vanity here. It's very sizable, plenty of room to get ready and things like that. Double sinks, which are these really cute circular basin sinks. Tissue for you, as well as some toiletries. I see body lotion, mouthwash, a vanity kit, and a shower cap, plus facial soap. Under the vanity, we've got a pretty sizable space here that has hand towels, a trash can, and some full-size towels for your use. Then into the shower area, we have this very sizable glass sliding door shower. You've got your shower mat here on the edge, a huge square tub. This is a massive bathtub. Even a tall person like me could absolutely take a bath in this bathtub. And then we've got the beautiful sort of waterfall shower head plus a um, detachable one that you can move around. Pretty nice shower situation. I'll check out the um, pressure on that and insert a clip here. There's a ton of space for setting things down in here along the border of the tub, but you've also got this little crevice in the wall where you can set down your toiletries. And of course, Disney's supplied refillable toiletries, body wash, conditioner, and shampoo. Heading into the bathroom, we have this very adorable Jack-Jack art with Jack-Jack's many powers, one of which being his Edna Mode power. I wonder what my favorite Jack-Jack power is. I don't know, they're really all great. I hope there's an Incredibles 3. And then we have more towels here. And of course your commode, another little trash bin with your toilet paper and everything you need in here. And again, this room does lock. And that's your bathroom which is so cute and I love it. It's not huge, huge, but I do love it. I'm super excited to look around the rest of this hotel though. Contemporary is one of my favorites. It's historic. It's been here since the opening day of Magic Kingdom, 1971. So let's go have a look around. Hotel tour of the Contemporary. Ooh. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this hotel is very confusing how it's laid out. These two big columns are where you're gonna find your elevators and that's how you're gonna get up and down in most cases. Now the main tower is home to some club level floors. So on floors 12 and 14, there are club level lounges. The upper level floors in general are club level. So those are not gonna be available to guests that are not in club level rooms, but club level is an option if that's something you would wanna book. All right, so I'm back here on the fourth floor for us to start walking around and checking stuff out. You can see this is a general map of the resort. You've got the main tower, which is where we've been all day. This is the monorail to Magic Kingdom, away from Magic Kingdom towards the uh, TTC, Transportation Ticket Center. You got the convention center that we saw earlier over here. You come out of the hotel, you've got the South Garden Wing down here, pool area, which we'll check out, and then Bay Lake Tower, which is the Disney Vacation Club, Disney World Timeshare area, which we'll check out as well. So as you might have noticed, the fourth floor Grand Canyon Concourse is busy. There have been a ton of people out here all day. That's because there's a good amount of dining here, which we will take a look at. And again, a lot of people just hang out at the Contemporary all the time. So as I always say when you're staying at a Disney World Resort Hotel, make sure you check out the recreation boards. These are usually posted around the resorts and say all the different things that you can do. Some for an extra fee, some for free during your resort stay, especially if you have a resort day, which I highly recommend if you're staying at a deluxe hotel, you'll want to check out the recreation options. Speaking of recreation, there is a caricature artist here on the concourse, which is really awesome. And let's check out the first of a couple merchandise locations here. This is Bayview Gifts, located right across from the entrance to the monorail station here in the Contemporary. Can't show you that entrance because there is security and you're not supposed to film security, but let's head on into Bayview Gifts. This is the largest of the merchandise locations here at the Contemporary, and there's a pretty wide range of merchandise. So let's power through it, check it all out and I'll try not to spend any money. 50th merchandise. 
Disney Volt Collection, Disney Home Stuff, Disney Pride Collection, designer options like Dooney and Burke and these wildly expensive ears. There's even an entire bakery case, so if you've got a craving or your sweet tooth is calling. There's some nicer resort wear like Vineyard Vines. You can sometimes find designer options like this at some of the more expensive hotels. The contemporary specific merchandise, which is very cool. There's this contemporary dress as well as a contemporary button down and this kid shirt, which I might need. Remember I said I wasn't going to spend any money, but if I get this in a child's large, I can wear it. And that's really cute. Plus Nuimos and Spirit jerseys and a bunch of more standard Disney merchandise too. So pretty wide selection. Oh, I found more contemporary specific merchandise back here. Contemporary resort. There's even contemporary robes. My brother collects bathrobes and I bought him that once. It's a true story. And that's Bayview Gifts. This is certainly one of my favorite resort stores to wander around. It has a pretty wide selection of merchandise and it's nice and bright in here. Worth doing if you're in the area. On either end of the concourse, you've got these huge windows, which are really cool. Look out at the sky, let a lot of light in through here. And down towards the end of this pathway over here, you've got a little seating area, which is always where I end up waiting for my California Grill reservation. If Bayview Gifts didn't have what you're looking for, you can check out Fantasia, which is this Mickey-shaped store kind of in the middle of the concourse. And this sense has a lot of toys, pins, souvenirs, and stuff like that. Puzzles, board games, plushes, some more general Disney merchandise, t-shirts, and kids' clothes. Plus, across the way, you can see a bunch of pins. If you're looking for something in particular, you might want to check here. And right now, they've even got a Star Wars section, plus some Toy Story toys down here. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen these. I didn't know you could get, like, the turning red characters as plushes. That's so cute. I especially like this little shop because it is themed to Fantasia and when you're sitting outside of it you can see sort of all the Fantasia characters in different little art pieces. Just super cute. Also talk about a good photo spot. In fact, should I take a selfie? The answer is yes. <laughs> monorail passing by, I told you it literally comes through the hotel. This has got to be the coolest monorail station. There is not a cooler station than this one. Our next stop is Fantasia Market, which is yet another merchandise location, plus has some grab-and-go snacks and things like that. They've got the cute Alice in Wonderland merchandise collection in here. Tons of grab-and-go snacks. They've got alcohol if you'd like to take it up to your room. Candy, pet, pet clothes. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, actually, this is the store where it's at because they've got the Essentials Wall, my favorite. I'm gonna just, I only need a couple. I'm just gonna, just gonna buy this. Don't worry about it. And they've got autograph books and stuff in here as well. Nala, Hank. Is that Minnie's cat? Is it Fiero? Figaro? Figaro. That's what I'm going with. Final answer. Tiger. Cinderella. Um, Steamboat Willie. Did I get all those right? I hope so. Now the monorail station is located on the fourth floor on the main concourse. It's right above me right now. We are going to check it out in more detail tomorrow because I am going to take the monorail to our final destination at the end of our staycation. And so we'll head up there tomorrow and see how long the wait is, especially because we're going to be going early, right around park open time. So it'll be interesting to see um, how long the wait is. Our next stop is the game station, which is this resort's arcade. I've never actually been in here, and I actually think it's gotten a little bit of a redo recently. Looks pretty cool if you ask me. Oh, it's big! Speedy walk through. Our next stops on this floor are places you're definitely going to want to see because it's dining, including one of the most popular restaurants in Disney World. So the right side of the Mary Blair mural from where I am is the monorail station. The left side is where you'll find three different dining locations here at Contemporary. So first up, we've got this Contempo Cafe. This is one of the resort's quick service locations. It does serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, along with a sort of snacks and drinks, and it's pretty well known for having a great dessert selection as well. Here you can see some of those desserts and muffins. Look at this monorail cupcake. Are you kidding? That's so cute. And there's this adorable 50th one too. This spot tends to have some pretty good counter service options. It's gonna be a little bit better than like par counter service. And they've got a pretty wide selection as well. So kids meals, salads, 
things like that. You can even grab and go some stuff if you don't want to mix it neat. And you can order your food to go through mobile order or at the counter. I've actually had a really good breakfast here before. I am not going to be able to eat breakfast tomorrow because we have a pretty early start, but I had a breakfast sandwich here that was pretty killer on one of my earlier resort reviews. If you want a review of a breakfast sandwich here at Contempo Cafe, you can check out my tour of All Star Movies where I did come over here and have breakfast and it's pretty good. Wide selection of beverages and a good amount of seating as well. So just a great place to come if you just need a quick meal either for here or to go. Just next door is the reason a lot of people visit Contemporary and that is for Chef Mickey's. This is what I mentioned is one of the most popular restaurants in Disney World. It is an all you care to enjoy character dining restaurant where you can have breakfast or dinner with the Fab Five. That's Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, and Pluto. So pretty big one. You've got buffet breakfast with Mickey and the gang and then a buffet dinner um, has the two meal options. And you've got a variety of dishes. It's a pretty classic breakfast and like dinner pretty classic as well. You've got prime rib and stuff. The food is pretty good, but really what you're paying for is the characters here. Now Chef Mickey's is on the pricey side. It is a character dining meal, so it does come with those character dining prices. But for a lot of people, it's a favorite. Kids and adults alike really like seeing Mickey and the gang in their cute little chef's outfits. I will say it's not my favorite character meal. I think there are character meals with better food where you can meet the same characters in cute outfits too. So um, maybe check out the one at Tobolino's Terrace over at Disney's Riviera Resort. But this one is a favorite for a reason. It's very close to Magic Kingdom. It's easy to hop on over here after or before your Magic Kingdom day. So worth looking into. It just does tend to be very crowded. It's a very difficult reservation and it's a louder meal. And the final dining location here on the concourse is Outer Rim, which is the resort's lounge. You can probably tell this lounge hasn't gotten much of a facelift, but there is plenty of seating over here, some tables playing right now live sports, and there's these beautiful windows that look out onto the water and the pool area with a really nice view. It's definitely a relaxing space. You're going to find pretty standard Disney Resort cocktails here, but it's a full bar. They've got a few beers on tap as well, so a good place to stop if you're looking for a quick drink. Typically, I'd want to grab a drink here to check out the lounge, but we're going to be checking out the Steakhouse 71 lounge in just a little bit, so skipping it for now. We got things to see, things to do, especially go to a hidden floor. There's a whole floor that's kind of hidden, kind of. So we need to go see some of the options on the third floor, and this hotel is tricky, so you'd think, oh, we'll just take the escalator down to the third floor, but the escalator actually skips straight down to the second floor. So we need to hop back in the elevator to get to the third hidden floor. What could be on it? So there's not a whole lot going on on the hidden floor, hence why it's hidden. There's this little seating area by the elevator, and this is actually where the catering and operation services um, sit here in the Contemporary for conventions and if any events are happening in the ballrooms. But there is one guest amenity here, and it is the fitness center. This was one of the larger fitness centers. It's got TVs and treadmills and strength equipment and benches and free weights. Lots of stuff. So if you need to work out while you're staying here, head to the fitness center on the hidden secret third floor. Okay, back to the less secret parts of the resort. So now we are here on the second floor, which looks really boring, but it's actually got two of the most interesting features of this entire hotel located on it. So one thing that seems kind of boring, but is actually way cooler, and I'll tell you why, is that this floor is home to part of the convention center of this hotel. There's a lot of ballrooms and things for big events. And one of these ballrooms is actually probably the most surprisingly historic location in the hotel, despite the fact that the whole hotel is historic. A massively famous uh, political event actually happened here at the Contemporary. And I'll show you exactly where and I'll tell you what it is. So this side of the second floor is home to the Ballroom of Americas, which is this entire, like all these doors lean into it. It's a really big ballroom. And this ballroom is actually where Nixon gave his extremely famous I am not a crook speech right here in Disney's Contemporary Resort, which when I learned blew my mind and it happened right here, right next to where I am. That is officially a fun fact that I give you permission to steal and tell your family and pretend that you just knew and not tell them where you got it so that you seem smart. You're welcome. But besides that super cool fact, there's really only one thing on the second floor that you're 
regular everyday guest is going to be interested in and that is this little desk over to the right here so the second floor is where you'll find the check-in to california grill which is the signature restaurant here at disney's contemporary resort it is the rooftop restaurant as well located all the way up on the 15th floor amazing fireworks views amazing food one of my favorite restaurants in all of disney world one of the things that's unique about it is to get up there you actually have to take this private elevator all the way up um, it makes it feel like a very elevated, elegant experience. As you might guess from the name, California Grill does offer California-style cuisine as well as sushi. They're actually award-winning across their menu, but their sushi especially. I've had it. It's amazing. I've been to California Grill more than any of the other <laughs> signature restaurants here in Disney World. It's a favorite for my family and with good reason. The food's awesome. Right now, they do have a modified menu kind of celebrating the 50th, which is a prefix offering cuisine that's sort of inspired by the 1970s. And it is three courses. Specifically, it's supposed to evoke the spirit of 1971. Now, arguably the best part about it is that it does have views of the Magic Kingdom fireworks, both from within the restaurant in the floor to ceiling windows, as well as from the outdoor terraces up there that get very windy, I'll warn ya. There used to be lounge seating at California Grill. They have removed a lot of the lounge seating and made it regular dining seating, but there is still first come first serve seating available at the bar. Now, if you do want to sit at the bar, you're probably going to want to be waiting outside the California Grill check-in desk before it even opens to make sure that you are first come first serve because that bar does fill up very quickly. The wait can be long for it if you do want to hang out and wait for it. Regardless of when you dine either at the bar or with a reservation, you can head back up to check out the fireworks when it's time. So even if you go right when it opens or like even at 5 p.m., you can head up and see the fireworks whenever they start, whether that's at 9, at 9 or 10, as long as you keep your receipt or if you had a reservation earlier in the evening. So though that fireworks time reservation is coveted and a great one to get, I highly recommend it. It's always a must do for us as a fireworks time reservation at California Grill. You don't have to have a fireworks time reservation to see the fireworks from the rooftop, which is one of my favorite places to watch Disney Enchantment. Also, fun fact, incidentally, it's the last place I saw Wishes and the first place I saw Happily Ever After was from California Grill. There are escalators on this floor to take you down to the first floor, but we are heading outside to see some more of the amenities of this hotel. Oh wow, it's really cooled down out here. So something to keep in mind is that the backside of Contemporary facing away from Magic Kingdom is in the shade for the latter half of the day, which is where the pool is. So the sun is really out in the morning over here. It's still plenty warm, it's Florida to go swimming, but just so you know. So right out back of the Contemporary is the Contemporary feature pool, which does have this cute kids splash pad area, which kids are having a blast at right now, as well as a larger pool area with a slide. Now this is not one of the more themed pools in Disney World, nor is it one of the largest, but it is pretty sizable. There's a slide, there are hot tubs, there are even cabanas that you can rent, and it's beachside, it's right by the water, so it's still a really nice pool, a really nice way to spend your afternoon. There's a ton of families having fun in there right now, so I am having a great time exploring this resort, but if not, maybe I'd be at the pool. That brings us over here to the garden wing which as you can see are more of the contemporary rooms that are not a part of the main tower. There's a little bit of construction going on with these rooms right now as they transform them into that incredible style, I think. So a little bit of construction over here, but still these are um, the cheapest rooms at the contemporary since they're not in that schnazzy main building. You still get all those contemporary perks though, and they tend to be a little quieter. So the garden wing is definitely an option worth looking into. If you want to stay at this deluxe resort, but you're on a little bit more of a budget than being able to spend $700, $900 on a room. If I remember correctly, these rooms before discount can be in the $400 range per night, which though expensive in the realm of hotels, is pretty cheap when it comes to Disney Deluxe hotels. Plus a lot of these rooms have great views of the garden here or the water there. So pretty nice. They also look very 70s on the outside, which I kind of love. Oh, yep. Definitely incredible as I can see the Incredibles curtains. The other cool thing about Contemporary is that it is sandwiched between Seven Seas Lagoon um, over by Magic Kingdom and then over here Bay Lake. So you actually have a lot of opportunity for water views but no matter which side of the hotel you stay on. There are some rooms that don't have water views but a lot of them do. And like the other monorail resort hotels, Polynesian and Grand Floridian, there are white sand beaches. They're just hidden on the side, so they're actually not as hustly and bustly as the other ones. Or especially right now, this beach is really quiet. These rooms on the end of the garden wing even have stairs right onto the beach so close to their patios. It's really nice. Hello, ladies. Duck ladies. As is true at any Disney World resort, you want to check the pool area for some recreation options. 
there is beach volleyball, which check this out. Oh my gosh. The um, net has a monorail on it. <laughs> I love that. So if you've never walked back behind the Contemporary, you probably didn't even know any of this existed. And there's more. We're like not even to the half of the stuff that's back here. There's also a much smaller pool over here right on the bay, like literally right on, not the bay, Bay Lake, uh, with some more of those cabanas that you can rent. I'll show you where you can rent those as well. And there's all this lovely seating, which is right next to the sandbar. Now there is actually a boat launch back here as well, which is one of the transportation options here at uh, Contemporary. Unfortunately, this water launch hasn't returned, but it did use to provide transportation from here at the Contemporary to Wilderness Lodge and Fort Wilderness Campground via boat, just a straight boat shot. Uh, really convenient if you're staying at any of those resorts to check out the dining at the others. Hopefully that returns, maybe it will with Hoopty Doo coming back, but we will keep you updated, so keep an eye on All Ears Net. Also, if a day on the lake sounds fun to you, they do have boat rentals here and fishing excursions that you can check out. And to do that, you're gonna to wanna to head over here to the boat nook, which is a window, it's after five now, so it's no longer open for the day, but you can book things like fireworks cruises, guided bass fishing excursions, and the pontoon boats. This resort's pool bar is located right here. It's called the Sandbar, and it is small, but mighty. So the sandbar is going to be your classic pool bar. Lots of the standard drinks you can see around Disney resorts at the different pool bars and things like that. I am a really big fan of this cucumber and mint mojito. That's one of my favorites. Morgan and Molly both really love it too. So highly recommend if you're a mojito person. And then as you can tell, the main sort of theme at the sandbar are uh, nautical flags and really cool. She actually told me what they spell out. So this one here spells M-I-C-K-E-Y, Mickey. And then around the ceiling inside, there is the little guy holding up the different flag positions. And she told me that it spells supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, which I am obsessed with. And there is the sort of sandbar grill, which doesn't always have the same hours as the bar, but is a great place to grab real basic eats like a cheeseburger or hot dog if you're having a pool day and don't want to run all the way inside. Of course you've got restrooms and amenities out here. There are laundry services in the different buildings. You can find those on the maps or by asking a cast member. A few more notes about recreation out here. And then this side is just another window for the book nook. Book nook. Boat nook. Now a lot of people consider the theming at the Contemporary a little austere. Uh, they consider it a little outdated and it certainly is. It does not feel as like magical as some of the others and it doesn't necessarily feel as modern as some of the others either which makes sense because it's from all the way back in 1971. I however do think it feels very Disney just because it is a classic hotel that has been here since opening. What's more Disney than that? And that's why I'm a fan of the Incredibles Week theme because it adds a little more of that like magical fun theme to it as well. But I'm going to show you one of my favorite theming details that is very nostalgic to me and I have some silly photos on it. So this little Mickey Mouse statue is like, I literally took so many pictures in this when I was a little kid when my family was stopped by Contemporary. I think I should right now, too. There's a little thing you can put your phone on. And there's lots of Mickey detailing out here in the honestly very beautifully manicured grounds. Um, Disney's gardening teams are awesome, and that's no different here at Contemporary. It's just a little bit more, like, sort of neat because that's the vibe of the hotel. I'm now making my way over to Bay Lake Tower, which you can see right here. Again, this is the Disney Vacation Club offering here at Contemporary. It's gonna have studios and villas. You can see at the top, those two-story windows are the Grand Villas, the largest over there. And there are a few offerings over there for DVC that we're gonna take a look at, just a quick tour. And you can access this tower from the ground, of course, like I'm going to. And then there also is this Skyway Bridge that connects the fourth floor of the Contemporary with the fifth floor of Bay Lake Tower. On our way over, there is this little courtyard that has a ton of chairs in it, and I can see that they are setting up that movie under the stars tonight to watch The Lion King. And as is true of pretty much every Disney hotel, there is a jogging route. You can check out resort maps to find out exactly what that route is, but it does go by the water, which is very lovely. And you can see that there's even a spot for a campfire over there, which happens on most nights, weather permitting. The weather is like completely different on this side of the tower. It is so hot on that side because it's directly in the sun. And back here it's like been, speaking of sun, back here it's been like shady for hours. The wind is blowing because we're so close to the water. It's like delightful. And as soon as I go back over there, I'm gonna be sweating again, I'm sure. All right, and here we are taking our short stroll over to the main entrance for Bay Lake Tower. Again, this is, most of the amenities at Bay Lake are intended for Disney Vacation Club visitors, but I wanted to show them to you because you don't have to be a DVC member to stay in DVC rooms. You can pay cash for them. Uh, they do tend to be expensive, but you can. 
But before we head fully over to Bay Lake, we're going to make a little detour here to talk about one of the most important things that you'll need to know about if you're going to stay at Contemporary, and that's transportation. The bus stop for the Contemporary is located just off of the main lobby on the first floor, and you will need to take buses to get pretty much anywhere unless you can access it via the monorail, or if it's Magic Kingdom, you can walk. Disney World buses do come every 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the schedule, and they'll take you to Hollywood Studios, uh, they'll take you to Animal Kingdom, <laughs> Epcot you can get to via monorail, Disney Springs you can head to on the buses. As for Magic Kingdom, you can of course take the monorail all the way around to Magic Kingdom, or you can walk. It is an under 10 minute walk. It's one of, it's the shortest walk you can take from anywhere to Magic Kingdom. And uh, it's definitely one of my favorite perks about this entire hotel is the fact that I can walk and be on Main Street in about 10 minutes. Now the monorail wise, you can get on the Resort Loop monorail to Polynesian or Grand Floridian or to the Transportation and Ticket Center for transfer to Epcot. And of course it does also have a stop at Magic Kingdom. We are going to take the monorail tomorrow morning. Like I mentioned, we'll check out those crowds. You're never going to guess where I'm headed. You're really not going to guess. Now, if you are checking in at Bay Lake Tower, this is where you'll head. It's got a separate entry and a separate lobby. Now, I will note the Bay Lake Tower studios and villas have not had an Incredibles re theme. So that's something to keep in mind. So as you can see, the lobby at Bay Lake Tower has a much more modern theme than the rest of Contemporary. That's because it is newer. Um, without having that Incredibles overlay to it. It is very like sleek in there. There's like that chandelier that looks like bubbles and there's like palm trees in the lobby. It's a very cool vacation-y feeling entryway. It, it honestly feels kind of like a Miami hotel a little bit. And then out back, we've got some of those added amenities. There is the community hall back here. This is an amenity that you'll find at Disney Vacation Club Resorts, which is just a place for DVC members to have a little recreation. There are crafts and things like that. Um, lots of fun to be had. Kids can definitely easily find some fun in there. Sometimes there are movies playing in community halls. Worth checking out if you've got a resort day and you're hanging out over here by Bay Lake Tower. Then there's this beautiful fountain as well as these this interesting tree situation. I'm actually not really sure what's going on here. Bay Lake Tower does have a few sport courts, including uh, bocce ball and shuffleboard, as well as there are tennis courts available. Disney Vacation Club members also have access to another pool over here, which is Bay Cove Pool that has this very cool slide. I love the, like, I don't know what that's called, marble glass. It's very old school to me. I think it's a good touch. Just like over at the main contemporary, it's pretty bustling over here. Lots of people having a very fun afternoon since the weather's nice on this side of the hotel anyway. And don't worry because if you are spending a day over at this pool, there is a pool bar here as well called Cove Bar. Similar offerings, gonna be those standard pool bar drinks to have a nice pool day. Now, this is a Disney Vacation Club hotel and if you're not a Disney Vacation Club, there's probably a dining location that you have never heard of at this hotel. And it is called the Top of the World Lounge. I'll show you where it is. Let's sit up there in that circular part of the building. Now the Top of the World Lounge is actually not open right now. It has yet to reopen. Um, so keep an eye on all your Zotnet for news about that. But it is a Disney Vacation Club exclusive lounge. It was more like Vegas style. Had It's very schnazzy for a lounge. It's all in that circular portion of the hotel. Very beautiful views and things like that. So keep an eye on all ears to learn more about if and when Top of the World Lounge reopens. Top of the World Lounge has been confirmed as getting a reimagining. We're not really sure about details yet, but definitely stay tuned to allears.net because changes to dining locations, I'm interested. So right here on the water, you can find the barbecue pavilion. You can get complimentary barbecue utensils from Community Hall. And it's just, I mean, if you're here for a while and grilling out seems like a good time, you've got that option right here with beautiful views of the Spanish moss hanging from the trees and right out onto the water. All right, and that just about does it for most of the things at the hotel. I think we take that sky bridge back to the contemporary main building. And I don't know about you, but I've worked up a bit of an appetite and I think it's time we head to Steakhouse 71. Oh, this is a good note. So this patio, it is under construction right now, but this is uh, typically have some chairs and things for people who want to watch the fireworks from the fourth floor. That's good if you have a room that doesn't have fireworks views like mine, uh, or if you don't have a reservation up at the California Grill, you can watch the fireworks from right there. Though it is closed right now. And just like that, we're back in the main concourse.
So before we grab a seat at the lounge, which is first come, first serve, I want to tell you a little bit more about Steakhouse 71. Like I mentioned, it is a 1970s themed restaurant, got casual dining for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it did replace the wave of American flavors, which you might remember if you've been to Contemporary prior to the opening of Steakhouse 71. Lounge seating is located to your right as you enter. There's also this beautiful bar where you can grab some a limited variety of options off of the menu as well as some cocktails. We've really enjoyed the meals we've had here at Steakhouse 71 so far. I highly recommend the chocolate cake which has 15 layers representing the 15 floors of the contemporary and also we're big fans of the burger which is on the lunch menu and the lounge menu but you can also find it at dinner if you ask. I've now snagged a seat at the lounge so we're gonna order and then we're gonna eat some delicious food. I highly recommend to stop here at Steakhouse 71, whether you are staying a contemporary or not. It's an awesome sort of mid-priced meal. It's still on the expensive side, but it's not like Disney signature prices or paired for meal prices. So swing by here, check out the menu, see if it's stuff you might like. Maybe make it lunch on your Magic Kingdom day. So for my drink, I got the Pear French 75, aka the French 71, which is Corvoisier VS Cognac, Pear Nectar Agave Syrup, lemon juice and prosecco this is one of my favorite cocktails in disney world so i'm pretty excited about this one let's see how this particular one stands up cheers it's so good the pear flavor is super forward especially in this one it feels, tastes like super juicy pear i can of course taste the prosecco and the cognac in there it's very rich flavors like it's very aromatic i can feel it in my nose and it's just an all-around, well-rounded, sort of like high bar cocktail. It's definitely a lot better than a lot of like the super colorful cocktails you get around Disney World. It's not like a pool drink. If you like a pool drink, I'd go with something else. But if you want something where you can taste the alcohol, where it feels a little more crafted, try this. It's very good. And then food-wise, I went for one of my all-time favorite eats in Disney World and probably my favorite burger in Disney World, the Stack Burger which is a signature blend of beef, American cheese, lemon aioli, red onion, house-made pickles, all served on a brioche bun. And it's served with a choice of petite wedge salad, Parmesan fries, or pasta salad. I went with the Parmesan fries because they are very good. Only way to buy a burger is upside down. I am dripping on myself. Moment of truth. This is an amazing burger. Now, it is like smashed patties, so they're super thin. If you like a really thick, juicy, like cook to order a restaurant burger this is maybe not going to be what you're looking for however for me i love a smash burger and those thin patties stacked up high with the juicy melty american cheese oh my gosh there's nothing better i think what really sets this burger apart is the red onion and the lemon aioli because it adds this like level of flavor that you don't get when you're like at your local place to serve smash burgers and it's just awesome it's twenty dollars so it's really not ridiculous compared to some of the other entree prices you might see around this resort and i just i can't recommend it enough if you're a burger person especially if you like a nice thin patty now let's try those fries these are really good they're awesome perfectly cooked crispy waffle fries covered in parmesan cheese like mine have so much parmesan chinos on them super good comes with ketchup might not seem like a super high-end meal, but it doesn't have to be. It's still in a super classy setting with awesome flavors, so I'm happy camper. If you can eat me, I'll be right here until fireworks time, that is. Hello, good news. I ran out to my car and I can hear the other entertainment offering that we can see the contemporary. And I'm going to show it to you if I can make it. So I think I can. So on our side of the hotel, we had fireworks views. But on the Bay Lake side, you do get views of the electrical water pageant, which happens right at 10 or at least it's tonight and i love this it is just a super cute little entertainment offering that runs to the hotels in this area at nighttime it's adorable there are cute little jingly songs it's so cute in the lake to see and it even has a special 50th anniversary addition to it right now fireworks from the room that was the best ever. That view was just as good, if not better, as when you see them from California Grill. It was awesome. I will say there's no music pumped into the balconies just in case someone doesn't want to watch it. I was able to pull up the Disney Enchantment soundtrack on YouTube pretty easily and I just played it and it was close enough. So I didn't really notice any difference. Uh, so I recommend doing that if you're gonna watch it from your balcony, go ahead and have it queued up before the fireworks start. It's been a pretty big day of exploring. I definitely have formulated some opinions and some pros and cons about this resort that I want to share. So, 
Obviously, perks-wise, this is a Disney World Resort hotel, which means you do have the perks of Disney World Resort transportation. You have extra theme park hours, both early theme park entry, 30 minutes early to whichever park you're headed to. And also, because it's a deluxe resort, you get extended theme park hours on select nights in select parks. On top of that, you get free parking at the theme parks, and Disney has confirmed that the Disney dining plan will be returning. So if that's something you're interested in, you can add that on as a part of your package here at Contemporary. This resort has a lot of pros, one of them being the location. There is literally not a closer hotel to Magic Kingdom. It is prime location. You've got easy access to the other monorail resorts as well as Fort Wilderness and Wilderness Lodge. And then you can take the monorail to Epcot. So it's a really awesome location, very convenient. Another pro are the rooms. These are some of the largest standard hotel rooms on property and they do feel very spacious. Plus, if you like that theme, that's a big bonus too. I am a big fan, so I'm loving the Incredibles theme. Tons of dining options at this resort and dining is also a pro because you have easy access to the dining at Polynesian and Grand Floridian and Magic Kingdom if you have park entry. So there's a lot of really great dining that's super easy to access from here, which is a massive pro, especially if you're a big food person when you're on vacation like I am. This resort has a lot of recreation options and then it's also historic. If you are a big Disney buff, staying at the Contemporary might be a little bit bucket list for you because it is one of the two original Walt Disney World hotels and it feels pretty historic. Also, I guess if you wanna stay in the hotel that Nixon gave his I am not a crook speech, that's also a perk for you. Cons wise, the transportation is certainly one of them though we do have the monorail here all of the other transportation is by bus right now, especially while that boat to Fort Wilderness isn't running. So if you are gonna get somewhere, odds are you're taking the bus or the monorail. And bus transportation, eh, you know, we don't love it. Another con is the decor, the themes. Some people don't love it. Some people don't love that classic contemporary, like 1970s feel that this hotel has. And some people don't love the new Incredibles theme. Some people don't love both. So if it's not your vibe, it's not your vibe. What are you gonna do about that? But that might be enough of a con for you to not stay here when you could stay elsewhere for the same amount of money. Speaking of the amount of money, this hotel is expensive. The room that I'm in tonight it bottoms out at like $750 without a discount. That is crazy for one night in a hotel room. So it's an extremely expensive hotel. It is the kind of thing that might be you spend part of your vacation here or you save up to stay here. So you have to really, really want to stay here to want to spend that amount of money. And then last but certainly not least, this hotel is on the crowded side. Not only does it have a lot of guests at any given time, it does have a lot of visitors with all of the popular dining and things like that. So people coming through on the monorail all day today, the fourth floor was super crowded and it certainly like stayed that way. So it is a crowded hotel. It's not gonna be the place for peace and quiet. If you do wanna stay here and want a little bit of that peace and quiet, I recommend staying in the garden wing, but it's a crowded hotel, so that might be a con for you too. Overall, you really have to decide if this hotel is right for you, especially for that amount of money. If the pros that I listed today seem like something that are worth it to you, then go for it. I absolutely love this hotel, but it's also a lot of money out of pocket to stay in these rooms, and you can get to some pretty great hotel rooms without spending quite as much. Take a look at my Coronado Springs tour for a look at Grand Casino Tower because that one I think is a bargain for what you get. In Disney standards anyway. But I have had a very big day exploring this resort. I think it's time that I do some extended eight hour bed science uh, before we get up and head to a, a very exciting destination in the morning. It's super exciting. You're not gonna wanna miss it and you're never gonna guess where I'm headed. So I'll show you in the morning. But for now, good night. Good morning. I slept great. The Edna Med, Edna Med. <laughs> The Edna Mode bed served me right. I slept fantastic. It's early as all get out and I feel rejuvenated. So um, it's not really that early. I'm just dramatic and I'm a night person, but um, it's before 8 a.m. So it's early, but we have somewhere very exciting to go. <laughs> um, but first, don't you want to see my morning view? Because it's pretty good. Ooh. Ah. Magic Kingdom in the morning. Unfortunately, no time for our coffee on the balcony because we got to get going, uh, got to head out and head to our final destination and check out that monorail along the way. Monorail through the building. Best monorail station in Disney World. We got to see it, come on. I have all my stuff with me. I'm gonna drop it with Bell Services real quick before I head out because I don't think I'm gonna be back in time for checkout, which is at 11 a.m. It's automatic, so you don't need to do anything. You'll get your folio emailed to you in the morning, and as long as everything there is correct, you can go ahead and head out. I got my folio emailed. It all looks right, so I'm gonna skip the front desk today, drop my bags at Bell Services to pick up later, and go ahead and head out to start my day. My room will just automatically 
not be available to me after 11 a.m. All right, I didn't film for security, but here I am coming up on the little like mini concourse for the monorail station. I can see down in a Contempo Cafe and Chef Mickey's, and you can see right where the building opens up for the monorails to come through. It took me one minute to get from the contemporary to the transportation ticket center on Epcot would probably be another 10 to 15 minute monorail ride, not counting weights. But we're not headed on to Epcot. This is actually my final destination this morning, and I'll show you why. Now, any of the monorail resorts have the huge perk of the monorail station, which it is honestly a huge perk. Like being able to hop on the monorail immediately from your hotel and head straight to Magic Kingdom or Epcot, even if it's a little transfer to the TTC, it's awesome. Um, I think the Contemporary has the best version of that perk because the station is literally indoors. You don't have to walk <laughs> even outside of the building to get to it, even if it's not that far at the other ones either. Well, the reason I had to come to the TTC is a very good one, and it's right here. <laughs> They're just having a good time. And that does it for my tour of Disney's Contemporary Resort. If you like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe, and now go watch my tour of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. See you there!